Hey everybody, Voltar here after a long hiatus. Now Canada has banned my body yet again from entering the country, and since then I've been really busy in various projects that have taken up a crap ton of my time. Uh, but no worries, I'm, I'm getting back into the routine here and we'll have a lot of video content uh, moving forward. So, what we have here is an AV Famicom. Now, a good friend sent this to me uh, because it's been modded with an NES RGB kit. He explained to me that he was having a lot of noise issues with the output on the video. Now, I asked him to elaborate on that, and so he showed me this. So, did any of you see the ripple noise in the blue solid background? When I first saw this, I asked him two questions. The first question was, are you using a third-party transformer or power adapter? And the second question was, has the linear 7805 regulator been replaced with an auto-switching converter? He told me he's using the stock power supply, but he did open the console up to find that the regulator was replaced with a switching unit. So what's the problem with that? Well, a big difference between linear regulators and switching supplies, other than heat, is their ripple performance under load. Now, auto-switching supplies can perform very well with low ripple, but it can take quite a bit of engineering to get them to that point. So let's open this thing. Let's restore the linear regulator, and we'll also check out the NES RGB installation, as that could certainly be a culprit here, too. So sit back, strap on, and prepare yourselves. So as always, we'll begin by flipping this thing over and removing some screws. Well, <laughs> that's um, not too bad, not too great, so let's, uh, oh, yeah, and sure enough, take a look here. Let's zoom in. There's the possible culprit right there. As you can see, the 7805, and even the heat shelf for that matter, or the heat sink, has been removed. And this is an auto-switching regulator. Huh. Okay. Well, let's just go ahead and uh, sort of tear this down a little further so we can get a good idea of really what we're dealing with underneath. Okay, we quickly went through all that. Let's just lift this up carefully and let's just take a look at everything. Get the bottom shield out of the way, casings. Okay, so these are the analog lines, uh, RGB. Looks like uh, looks like S Video 2, Chrome and Luma, uh, composite sync, and uh, encoded composite video off of the uh, CXA2075, or I think Tim actually uses a clone of that, but. Uh, that's all being outputted to the multi-out. And Jesus friggin' Christ! Are you fucking serious? This, no. No, come on. Come on now. You've gotta be kidding me. So... Yeah, this, this kinda looks suspect. I mean, this isn't bad. This isn't awful, right? Um, looks to be... Maybe 28 AUG with this really thin jacketing. The problem that I have though obviously is 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 the I don't know about a foot worth of slack uh, <laughs> uh, in, in the conductors here. Um, th this is just laying everywhere. It's, a, it's laying over the cartridge slot, it's laying over memory. I mean this could be you know, a huge culprit in terms of noise and, and, and uh, performance as far as your picture clarity is concerned. So, you know, this is probably a situation where you have you have two things going here. You've got you've got this switching supply right in here, and you also have this this disaster, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to replace this. I'm going to rip this POS out of there, and I'm also going to take and I'm going to sort of rework this so that this this is more correct. Uh, this is not a good practice. Um, if you're doing these in any volume, I mean, if you're a modder, which the person who did this is clearly a a somebody who you know 
does this, <laughs> this isn't how you do it, and this should never, ever, ever come out of somebody's shop. I mean, there is no excuse for all of this conductor. There's just no reason to have this much. I mean, you want this, you, you want your transmission lines as short and as direct as possible. Uh, you know, to to uh, um, for best uh, for the best performance possible, right? Um, so we're gonna. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna have to get in here. Um, here we go, folks. I guess I'm gonna redo this whole NES RGB mod and uh, uh, wire this correctly, and then we'll tackle the uh, we'll tackle the regulator. So let's do it. Okay, let's drop that switching regulator and replace it with a good linear one. Okay, she's out. Let's go ahead and swap it in. Okay, just to make this a little easier, I'm going to go ahead and um, anchor the 7805 to the uh, factory heatsink, and then I'm just going to position this and place this into place and solder. So let's go ahead and do that. Excellent. Okay, since we're doing everything from scratch and we're starting over, we need to remove this entire rat's nest of wiring. So let's just go ahead and remove it from the multi-out, and then we'll move over to, over to the NES RGB side, and we'll remove it from there. Okay, so now the whole process of rewiring this begins. So I'm going to jump into that hot and heavy. So to start this off, I'm going to use a seven conductor ribbon cable that's been pre-tinned on the input side. So really simple business as usual here. We're just going to solder to each of the seven corresponding outputs that we have, and then we're going to work on the multi-out. So let's go ahead and do that. Oops. Now the nice thing about ribbon cable is that it consolidates all your conductors into one strip. It's all still joined together, yet it still has some articulation to it. So we can work with it, it's pliable, it can move around. So what I'm going to do now is, I need to gauge distance as far as how much length needs to be cut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the, SNE, or the NES RGB kit. I'm going to pull it out of its socket very carefully. I'm going to fold it down inward, just like this just like this. Do you see what I'm doing here? It's very simple. Just like this. Nice and flat against the main board. We want to clear uh, the uh, hitters here, so we'll just tuck it under like that. Beautiful. I'm going to bring it down. I'm going to bring it inward. And once I have this in position, everything here is done. I'm just going to socket it back into place. I'm going to push down. And if you look, our ribbon cable is not constructing anything. It's all nice and clean and together and we can finish on the multi outside. So let's flip it around and let's look at that. So we flipped the board over and we're just trying to determine how much length we really need to cut from our ribbon cable. So I'm just here taking a look and just kind of eyeballing it a bit. And um, oh, a little solder splash there. And uh, I'm, just, I'm just determining. I'm just determining what looks good, how much lead way, how much slack we need to put in here. But also what's important to consider when doing this is that you have on the side of your, sh of your shield here or on your bottom case, excuse me, you have these ribs, right? Uh, these little uh, indentations. So what you need to do is you kind of, if you're kind of new to this and you've really not done it in this way, if you've not used this method, just go ahead and mate, mate the board to the bottom shell. And you can see exactly where the separations are. Now I can see right under the cartridge throat or the cartridge port, there's this nice, um, there's this nice dip here. So what my goal is here at this point uh, the width of the connectors here, the conductors here, I think I can get it to squeeze in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm just going to take a look and I'm going to see just where I can get it in there, just like that, as you can probably sort of kind of see. And I can see if I can get it right in there like that. We're not going to have any obstructions, and it's going to fit beautifully, just like that. 
So I'll, I'll, you might not be able to see that so perfectly, but it'll look good and it's going to be sexual. So let me go ahead and get this straightened out and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, after taking about five seconds to actually measure the flipping conductors, uh, I managed to get everything in relatively fast. So again, if you'll remember, we took our uh, seven conductor ribbon cable, popped the NES RGB board off, tucked it underneath, ran it through here. If you look here on the side, it fits just perfectly in that small rib. I want to show you the bottom and the soldering to the actual multi-out. So let me just pop this off here, turn it upside down, and look at that. I mean, that is quite exceptional. We have a nice short lead. This is as short as we can get it, regardless of whatever configuration this is in. We have the shortest wire path. Our transmission lines are very well oriented here. The soldering up here is very neat. We are not making any more crosses in the wiring of the conductors than absolutely necessary. And all in all, this is just a winner. I mean, in, in my opinion, this is this is exactly how these should be done. So, you know, <laughs> this 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 rat's nest stuff, I, I don't understand it, and especially the length. You know, you got to be careful about this stuff. This is we're talking about analog video signals here, and when you have a bunch of antennae that are just draped or, draped around the board in various places like that. Of course, noise is going to be an issue. So, you know, this video is more so a wiring sort of tips and tricks for the NES RGB than anything else. I mean, yeah, we 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 uh, obviously we swapped out the uh, the regulator here to uh, uh, you know so we can get some better ripple performance uh, and thus have a uh, you know more clarity in our picture output. But ultimately, you know, I feel that wiring is just as important as that's eight tenths of the job at least. So, if you take anything from this little short video. Proper wire management or good wire management practices, um, good routing practices for, for your wiring. Um, there is no reason why nobody, not anybody, could do it like this. I mean, this is very simple, and it's all self-contained. You don't have you don't have a rat's nest. This is this is very secure. This isn't going to pop out. I mean, it's it's fit to form here. You just need to take the the six seconds to 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 route your wire bring it over this little dip here, in this case of the AV Famicom, we have a little cutout here in the plastic so it'll fit under there. You bring it out, you measure a little bit here, cut, tin your conductors, you're done. So I mean, I really think that's going to do it for this, guys. Um, you know, he's having some ripple noise there, and I think we addressed that, and I think I, uh, I, I could get some captures of that, but I'm really not interested in doing that at this point. Um, a couple things to take a note, of course, is, you know, switching regulators, in my opinion, and I think it's becoming a shared consensus in the community. They really don't have any business in NES systems. They really don't have any business in any of this old stuff that used 5-volt linear regulators. Unless, unless it's built fairly well. And it has all of the components and, and caps and everything on there necessary to, to, to really bring that ripple performance in greatly when you put them when you put those things under a load uh, the worst thing that you could do is have a auto switching eight dollar power supply from eBay in concert with one of those switching regulators like we just replaced this is one of those situations where you know as far as far as the regulator is concerned and the, and the and the voltage supply for these older systems leave the five volt linear alone just just keep it in there if you take it out more than likely it's just going to cause you trouble um, but you know that's, is, that's pretty much it, guys, for this video. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, hope you learned a little something. Just something really quick I threw together to, to kind of show you guys. Um, you know, just, just good wiring practice. Good wiring techniques for the most part. But at any rate, if you liked it, rate it, subscribe. Uh, feedback, things that you would like to see uh, in, the, in the following weeks and months that you'd like me to uh, touch on, uh, I'm more than happy to. So as always, I appreciate you men and women for being my friends, and Voltar hopes you have... Happy time.